So, Georg, do you still have the record button? I don't have it right now. We are now recording our Chaos Community Call on October 29, 2019. Welcome, everyone. Thanks. Um, so, Georg had put a link to the minutes in the chat. If you could head over there, that'll help us a little bit. So, there are a couple things that I just wanted to bring up today, maybe about four or so. So the first one was with respect to the community reports that we have offered to do for Zephyr and Jenkins X. So if you recall, the idea here was that we would reach out to two communities uh, and see if we can't build community reports for them based on the existing chaos metrics. So that's, that's the premise here. Um, some of those metrics will have to be done with tooling. So whether Augur, Sean, looking at you, or yeah. Grimoire Lab. We'll um, definitely do some, we'll definitely do an Augur component for this. Yeah, so I think, you know, maybe the easiest way to think about this would, we have two projects, two pieces of software. <laughs> maybe one software aims at one. So maybe Augur at, this is just my thought, Augur yeah. at Zephyr and Grimoire Lab at Jenkins X. If people have thoughts, let me know. It's relatively easy to do more than one project. Okay. I think we just want one report though. Like we would just say, here's an example chaos report generated for the Zephyr project. Okay. Um, any, those are just my thoughts that, that we have two tools. We have two projects. <laughs> give both tools an opportunity to, or both groups of software people, an opportunity to produce one of the reports. And Sean, I know you had done some stuff with Augur, or Augur with Zephyr. That was my yeah. there. That you'd, you'd already chatted with Kate. Yeah. Right? Chatting with Kate over the many, many years, basically. Yeah. They're both Linux Foundation projects, so, does anybody on the Grimoire Lab side have a comment on this? So from my, yeah, okay. from my perspective, I'm happy to do either. Um, and I think we can spin up a Grimoire Lab instance and start collecting the data on Jenkins. Do okay. we have a contact? people in each of those communities to help us through the process? We do. So I would help. So Kate would be the contact person with Zephyr. And then Kara is the contact person with Jenkins X. And I can obviously help make those connections. John, I don't think you need it. <laughs> with Kate. Yeah. I mean, no, for Zephyr, I mean, I think we can, I mean, I don't know. I think it would be interesting. I mean, I, I'm fine just doing this effort report. I think it'd be interesting for chaos, for Augur and Grimoire Lab to kind of look at each other's stuff on each project. Well, that's possible too. Mutual benefit of learning. Uh -huh. You know, I think there's things we can produce that they don't do yet and vice versa. So it might, it might be a good thing for the community or That's you know, a that. fair point. Yep, that's fair. Um, so I, though, I guess, so then, um, I mean, the, that, I think that's a totally fair point that Augur would do kind of a report for both and Grimoire Lab would do a report for both. And I think yeah, yeah. your point is, is that there might be we, differences. Yeah, we could talk to each other. Yeah, exactly. I think that's that's a good idea. Um, anybody have thoughts on that? Gary? Right. I don't think we, yeah, okay. It's a okay. um, I do think we want to provide a single report for each of the communities. So I, I think there's value in both tooling contributing to the reports. I think we just have to think through how we generate a single report or a community. Does that make sense? 
Like, I don't think we want to go to Jenkins X and say, hey, here's here's the chaos community report. There's two forms of it. No, no, and that's it. That's what I'm suggesting is like you can collaborate on the form. Okay. The process. Yeah, I mean, I, we could take, Auger could take Zephyr as a primary, and, and Morlab could take Jenkins as a primary, and that would okay. fall back. But um, I think it's relatively easy for us oh, to get cool. Jenkins. I mean, we just have to load the Jenkins repositories in the run, right? And I think the Morlab has to do basically the same thing. So we could compare and contrast and learn from each other in that process okay. if, if we choose to. But default to, we'll do it. Zephyr and we'll do Jenkins. And, Okay, so uh, that's. Really work together, but... I think that's fair. Okay. Um, so, oops. Okay. Um, okay, so that's good. Um, what I'll do, Gary had had a note from last week about kind of next steps. Do you think the next steps are for me to introduce kind of a single point of contact for Grimoire Lab with Kara and with Kate? You know what I mean, like Sean, just so we don't have like everybody in Augur. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, introducing a single point of contact that makes it easier for our people to work. Um, Georg, do you have thoughts on that? I think it makes sense to have uh, someone responsible from each side, from the mm -hmm. community side and from our side. Okay. So, yeah. Can I look to you as the Grimoire Lab point of contact? Yep, I'm happy to do that. Okay. So I'll make an introduction. I mean, Sean, I think you've met you. I know you've met Kara. And then, um, anyway, I'll just send one. Yeah. That kind of introduces everybody. Um, so again, kind of my, my goal on this is that, that we, um, are <coughs> that we're in these reports are the current set of chaos metrics. That's the goal, like no more at the moment. And if they ask for more, then maybe that's something we can talk about. And that could include the metrics that are on the release schedule for FOSDEM or ChaosCon Europe. So that's those templates that I put in there. Yep. Those are just, those are really only the the current set of metrics that I think are, that have been released. Does that make sense too? Does anybody have thoughts on that, that we should do more or do less or? That's, I mean, I think it's hard to sort of get our heads around what it is until we try to do it. It's one of those things. Yeah, I think the the next step is to make the introduction, yeah. then identify what data we need to collect. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we need to pull data from Git repositories, from issue trackers, from code review trackers like pull requests or Garrett. I don't know what these projects are using. Um, and then for the DNI, we have to collect the data a little differently. But yeah. once we identify those data sources for the repositories, issues, and code reviews, then we can start producing those numbers and then figure out how we want to display them. Okay. That's how I see it. Oops. Okay. That's fine. I just jotted that down. I mean, that my, I just write, wrote my goal to, I mean, my goal in this is to provide kind of ground truth for the metrics that chaos is releasing. That's, I understand that Augur has a lot more metrics that it provides. And I cert, I understand that Grimoire Lab also <laughs> has a lot more metrics. So I, I totally get that. And this report could be large. 
Um, the, the goal here is to link kind of the, some sort of practice or some application of the, the chaos metrics. All right. Um, I had from a, did anybody else have any comments on these? I think these are good steps forward. I have a general question, Max. Yeah. Sorry, because I don't have the context here, so. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, I guess this is already agreed, right? So, so we agree to, to do this, uh, but uh, yeah. what about the deadline? Um, there, there really, be, this isn't a, there isn't a deadline. So, I mean, I, sooner rather than later, I think is the hope. Um, I guess it would be great if we could, now that you ask, get it done before uh, Chaos Con Europe, but that may not be possible just with some of the complexities in pulling the DNI data. Okay. Other questions on that? Does anybody have a thought on deadline or like a timeline, I guess? Maybe not deadline, but a timeline. I mean, I think aligning it around the, I guess it depends on when the community, if the community can find it useful sooner rather than later, then we should shoot for late November. If the communities are flexible on when we do it and there's value at any time, it might be good to align it around the release of the metrics. Um, so, I mean, those are the two, okay. those are the two things I can think of that would drive a deadline. Okay. <coughs> any other thoughts on that? <coughs> I think however far we get at ChaosCon, we can give at least a lightning talk update on this. Okay. That's a guaranteed accepted talk. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's a good, that sounds great. Okay. Thanks everybody. Um, from a working group perspective, I guess one of the things that's kind of lingering on my mind at the moment is how working groups are doing with metrics releases. So I know that in that list here, there's the spreadsheet now and I'm, I've been slowly working my way through with the working groups to get the um, formerly released metrics in the new template. So that's, I think that's going just slowly but surely and totally fine. And I'm also updating the, just the metrics repository as well to the new template. So again, it's just like 10 a day kind of thing, slowly but surely. Um, that hasn't caused any huge issues for anybody, as far as I know, unless somebody wants to tell me. But again, I don't remove, really don't remove content. The only time I remove content, sometimes, Sean, there's old, like on the old activity metrics, some of the implementations include SQL statements, if you recall. They're yeah. probably aimed at <laughs> a very different database. Um, yeah, in fact, they probably are. Yeah, so I'll be aimed at, um, yeah. That but other one, what's it called? Uh, torrent. GH Torrent, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of, I'm removing some of those that are like highly, highly localized, but that's about all the data that yeah. I have. Um, so I know that, could somebody from each working group kind of tell me if I'm right or wrong on how I'm understanding some of the metrics that are being aimed at, new metrics that are being aimed at the release for ChaosCon? As far as risk goes, I'm pretty sure the CII best practice badge is on the docket. Test coverage. Sean, Matt Snell, anybody from risk? Uh, we're making progress on the ones that we're doing. I would say that we're kind of just getting into I had, yeah. I had to look something up for um, the, I've still got a pro request open, but it's got this, most of the best practice badge information is done. It's just in the pull request. Okay. So I just want to nearly done. Yes. Okay. Are there others from risk like test coverage? I know these have been talked about. I'm just trying to capture the, like the conversations that I look, identify in the notes. Because it's it's going to be November relatively soon, and if we want to get some of these move forward, I think now is the time. 
think about formalizing these and so is is test coverage one coming out of risk test coverage seems about as done as cia best practices right now pretty far along okay yeah test coverage was based almost done for the last release okay so that should be great um anything else so i see test coverage oh test coverage actually test coverage was released wasn't it maybe um so test coverage was actually released. So are there any <coughs> other like issue volume, average issue resolution time, code complexity? I'm looking at the list. For those of you that don't have the list, I'll put it in here. Software bill of materials has been worked on, but I think we have to do some changes, make some changes to that, some okay. pretty strong ones. Including the name. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. So maybe just one at this moment at the moment. Just Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll leave it at a single one, CII best practice badge, but it sounds like that's nearly done. Um anybody from Evolution? Is Carter is Carter on? I don't know that he is, but there he is out of the evolution group is you know which one? It's not my head. Okay. Um. So one of the things the evolution working group is working on is to change the structure of the metrics. So that will be new. Um, Just like the, to the new template? No, yeah. the organization and focus areas. Okay. Is changing. Whereas Right now, everything is in one focus area. We're splitting it apart into different focus areas. Which okay. I look at that is that's what we're doing for the standardization. It's I guess I see that as part of the standardization. But okay. Yeah, but I think evolution is the only one that is actually changing the location of metrics and focus areas. That's that's true. That's that's only because we had a fundamentally different way of organizing. Okay, so does anybody, that makes sense. Does anybody know of any metrics that are coming out of that? I understand that there, there could be new focus areas that'll reorganize the existing. I would say that most of the metrics coming out of it are coming from the tooling. So both Logger and Femora Lab are generating a set of metrics um, yep. that they already have and defining them in detail. Yep. <clears throat> Do you know what those might be? <laughs> just trying, trying I mean, to like we have a we have a list, but I guess I guess we're not ready to like I mean like we have a list that's in our minutes. Um uh, and we can our goal is to transform that and put it into the spreadsheet, but we okay. haven't done that yet. And okay. I can raise that with Carter as a thing to do this week. Yeah, uh, it's mostly just all of, yeah. I'm like starting to have on my mind, like, you know, in that first release, I think we had, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 metrics coming out. And it looks like the second release is going to be fewer, but yeah. I'm just I'm trying to get my head around. I mean, I sit, in a, I sit in on four working groups right now, and I think most of them, all four of them, to my recollection, are focused on sort of internally defining what they're going to do. And I don't remember a lot of discussion back out to the spreadsheet. And so I think okay. what I'm hearing is, we should probably now is a good time to have working groups start circling back to the shared spreadsheet and yeah. making sure the metrics that we plan to release are enumerated there. Say, at yeah, least a couple weeks. Yep, that would be thank you. That would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because yeah, like in my head, I'm like, we're just in it's all internal to the working group right now. And I think what you're drawing out is this external. Yeah, just so just some visibility on it. And if they all don't make the cut by you know the end of December, totally fine, but just yeah. Okay. Um, all right. From okay. Common, oh, did somebody say something? I'm sorry. I was about to say, I think the work group that has already updated the spreadsheet is value. Okay. I did see that. So I'll get to value here. Let me, let me just go through Common really fast. Common activity date and time is pretty much ready for release. So that was a geography metric for a while. So that should be nearly good to go. Um, and I know that there are a few others that may make the cut. Um, we have a meeting this weekend, this week. 
Um, from a DNI perspective, there was discussion on bringing forward speaker demographics and attendee demographics. And the reason was, is those are, be, those are both under the event focus area. And if we think about a badging program around events, maybe we want to kind of fully work out what those metrics might be under events. Because I think right now under events, we have three metrics identified. So from a DNI perspective, I think those are the two that were kind of identified in the last few weeks. I don't know if you were part of those conversations, Georg. Okay. Yeah, I think I missed those. Okay. Did that rationale make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So then value. Yes, I did see quite a bit of change. Andy, do you want to comment on that? Yes, I have comments. Um, we do have some additions that we've we've prepared. Uh, we have a new metric, which is a labor demand metric uh, that has been written up and um, it needs review and sort of. Where is it in this list? Oh gosh, um, I don't have the list, sorry. Uh, let me- yeah, I'll put it in the chat here. Okay. I think Andy is talking about the job opportunities, which is under living wage. That That's it. Mm -hmm. Job opportunities, I see it, okay. Okay. So we've got that, um, and we also are planning to do a live implementation of a prioritized metric for labor investment. Oh, okay. You also had in here, oh, release check template, organizational project skill demand. Is that uh, yeah, that, um, that I believe relates to this labor demand, uh, okay. the job opportunities thing that we had talked about. And then I see Georg has, you just have your name on there, Georg, which is social currency metric system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm working with Samantha and Dylan on- Oh, that's what that is. The metric to then hopefully include it in the next release. Okay, so that's kind of in progress. I see you marked it in progress. Right. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm gonna kind of put that social currency metric system. Oops. Look at this. Well, it's going to take me a while to type this metric. Okay. So, am I reading that right, Andy? It's kind of a couple right now. Oh uh, well, there's there's two that I guess are committed, and the social currency thing is something new. Okay. Uh, I I would put that in the in the category of exploratory a little bit. Okay. Uh, we've just had a few discussions on it. We haven't seen work product on that one just yet. Okay. So that that might make the next release, or or if not, then then the then the release after. Fair enough. Okay. There were a couple others in here. Things like commit count by organization, issue count by organization. Some of those are already covered in other work groups. Yeah. Okay. I see. Like I said. Yep. I see the link there. What about, oh, I see like response time, number of forks, organizational users also. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't put that on the list as something that we would necessarily commit to for the next release. Okay. Um, and I, I, we did go through sort of a period of kind of rapid uh, editing of the spreadsheet in our last meeting. Um, so I think, I think it might take another cycle or two for that list to really settle down. Okay. Uh, so the, the, the things that I'm quite sure that we will do are this new metric for the labor demand, the job opportunities, yep. and, then a, and then a live implementation of the prioritized metric for labor investment. And then some of these other things may be, may be folded into <coughs> our existing metrics. Yep. Uh, or, or maybe not. We'll, we'll see okay. how that goes over the coming weeks. Okay, that's fair. Thank you. Um, actually, I'm a, a question on the live implementation of labor investment. Yes. Did you, was this going to be something that you would use as a screenshot to update the metric, or is this something you want to provide like on an ongoing basis? Like oh, I just, I just want to publish a, a very simple little stripped down web. 
I think we lost Andy. We did lose Andy. Okay. So what what we're working on is um, just the tool to show what a parameterized metric can look like. Okay. And how it would work. Did I just? Did I just? Did my? Uh, yeah. Just it, it, it exploded. Okay. <laughs> Well, I had such a nice, clean explanation. Um, <laughs> and what it, what it was, was um, I said this parameterized metric, just a demo application, very simple little web app. Um, and the plan for the metric would be a link to the repo with the source code plus a screenshot. Okay. You might want to think about including that screenshot in the labor investment metric itself, you know, as a visualization. Yes, yes, absolutely. And it's part of the next release. Yes. Okay. We're done. All right, thank you. I think we that's good on the working group updates. Um, software updates, Grimoire Lab or Augur? Is there anything? Augur has um, we've created a bunch of really, I mean, useful new commands, I guess you could say. Um, Augur kill. Um, <laughs> so, and, uh, Essentially, the, the loading and starting of Augur is getting better and better. We fixed okay. our we fixed a bunch of little UI doodads, and we released the value worker. So now we code complexity and code uh, with our new value worker. Okay, right on. So yeah, a couple couple big I guess some big things this week. The students are not having exams, so more more stuff happens. Little so work <laughs> back to work. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, Grimoire Lab? Oh, before we move to oh, Grimoire sorry. Lab, Augur, uh, also the installation process, we went through that during the last call, and it's flawless. Flawless? Here, those are strong I words. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you promised to make it flawless with the- It is, it is, it is basically flawless now. We've done a lot in the last week. So I, I, I try it again now. <laughs> Well, don't try it on Windows, Manad, because we, we don't support Windows. Uh, okay, then so, I'll try it on the Linux. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't make me come here. <laughs> okay. All right, great. Flawless. You, who erased flawless? Yeah, we flawless in there. Gear said flawless. I, <laughs> I, I just turned over to the sheet and it vanished, but there it's back. Um, Grimoire Lab? Uh, for Grimoire Lab, uh, so yesterday there was a new release, and uh, so we have some new things. We okay, we fixed uh, some bugs. Uh, we are working on Arthur, so Arthur is basically the scheduler uh, to uh, that uh, processes uh, data from Perceval. So we advanced a lot on this. Uh, on sorting out, we have basically completed the GraphQL uh, API. Now we are working on. Uh, um, logging all the transactions that are done on uh, sorting up in a way that then we can recover the status if we have uh, some problems. And then, uh, so we have a new study in, uh, in Grimoire uh, Lab. So this study is pretty generic and uh, it allows any users to, to add uh, any kind of data to enriched indexes. So basically you have just to define uh, a query to identify the target uh, documents you want to modify, and then you can add the uh, uh, attributes that can that come from your scripts or uh, from well, I mean, anything that you want. Uh, and that's it. Can you specify what is new about Arthur? Uh, yes, so in Arthur, what we did basically last week, we focused on, uh, on working on, on, on Arthur and we changed the way of uh, uh, the jobs ID are uh, created. Then we replaced uh, uh, the way the tasks uh, are stored. Instead of using a, a simple dictionary, uh, we started working on uh, storing these, these tasks in a, in a Redis queue. <coughs> so in this way, we can recover some <coughs> possible crashes. And then uh, uh, we improved like uh, logging messages uh, and uh, minor things on Arthur. Okay. Excellent. Okay. 
Yeah. Thank you very much, Valerio. And Sean, can you please review that I captured the software updates correctly? Because that's what I will use for the weekly newsletter. I will review. Thank you. Um, some still just kind of um, on the metrics and software. We had talked last week about in the software just creating some pointer to the fact that some of the work in the software is stemming from the chaos community metrics work, you know, kind of yeah. connecting back and forth. Um, Sean, you had said you were already, you already document this in your API doc. We, uh, we create things. Can you, I was, can you, um, do you have a link that is that doc? Yeah, I sure do. That you could put in here? In the minutes. Yep. And again, the well, Matt, for the meantime, I don't know if you can just remind me if we have an article describing this social currency. It's really something I would like to read more on. Talk to Georg would have more on that. It's okay. actually let's pretty talk well. after the call. Yeah. Okay. I know there's there's some social currency stuff in Pro Arbor's doing and I'm gonna share some social currency work that I've done in the past and probably just implement some of those things in Augur to demonstration. I don't call it social currency, but Did you basically, get that? basically behavioral data, deriving behavioral data and influence from the logs. So Sean, did you get that link? Yeah, I'm working on it. Okay. Um, it's broken right now, so. Oh. <laughs> well, all right. So, um, and then I guess the same question, it just kind of stands out there. I think uh, Daniel was mm -hmm. gonna open an issue in Grimoire Lab side of things about how to just represent this connection to the chaos metrics. I'm not sure if he did that. Um, Daniel is on vacation. Um, I okay. don't think I saw an issue. Well, Larry, if you're more on top of what's happening in Grimoire Lab. Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Yep, this is just a, um, the conversation here is about how the the different software, whether it's Augur or Grimoire Lab, can just kind of identify that some of the metrics in here are helping define the chaos metrics or defined by the, by the metrics work or being defined from the community. And so for a while we were talking about identifying any metric in Grimoire Lab or Augur as appropriate <coughs> as a chaos as a chaos metric, um, but that gets to be kind of difficult to track. So the conversation from last week is whether the two different software could just put a statement that says this work is informed through the chaos metrics community work, something along those lines. It could go in a README file. It could go in a. Yeah, I, I can talk with uh, Alberto, that is basically the the metrics guy in Grimoire uh, Lab. So maybe for him, it's easy to identify possible relationship with with Pinhouse and what I mean, the metrics that Grimoire Lab uh, produces. Uh, but beyond this, I don't have really a, 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 too too much context. Uh, okay. So I, I have to check with him, but I I mean I can check and next week uh, just uh, okay. report. It's just, it's a real simple request. It's almost just like a statement somewhere. Okay. In, in the Grimoire Lab readme or something like that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, thanks, Sean, when you get that link, if it yeah. is broken at some point. Yeah, yeah. I know it's, um, I have, our build script got updated. And okay. It was not correctly. Um, I, anybody else have any comments on this? I just wanted to say, Armstrong, I posted a link in the chat. Oh, thank you so much. Um, with the Google code in, thanks for everybody who participated in that. I mean, I think there were maybe 20, 25 tasks that came out of that conversation. So that was fantastic. Um, they were. They ended up getting posted to the, the wiki that um, Till and Avik had asked for, 
they had both told me that it looks good. So as far as I know, every, everything was done. Um, I do believe they have done the submission. I think it, the submission deadline's already passed. Um, so at this point, I think it's just waiting to see if the Linux Foundation is approved as a participating organization in this project. That's all. So thanks for everybody uh, helping on that. Um, does anybody have any comments on that? The code in? All right. I also thought there were some really nice tasks, like some really low bar tasks and slightly more complicated tasks. So it was nice to see that wide variety. Um, with respect to ChaosCon, um, there is a there is a planning document there. I'm not sure how much we want to talk about it right now. Um, we have three sponsors now. We have GitLab, Baturgia, and Seco Assist, which is great. So. Um, I think we'll be covered. Yeah, it's just really nice. So this will be covered um, just in terms of, we, I think we're, we're going to provide lunch. Is that right, Georg? Yes, lunch, coffee, tea throughout the whole day. Yep. Yep. So we're covered on all of that, which is just fantastic. Um, Kevin, is Kevin on? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, just let me know what you need, like um, logo-wise or... Uh, those are live on the site now. Oh, okay. Well, that was quick. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, great. Um, super. Um, I had reached out to to Deb. She Deb's doing the keynote from uh, Software Freedom Conservancy and about uh, the pre hotel room. So I'll let her know about that. Um, oh, something exciting here. So um, I'm going to share my screen. Oh, hold on a second. So do you see this? Oh, yes. Ooh, I love it. So exciting. <laughs> yeah, but new um new poker chips. New poker chips that are that are branded for the conference. This was Georg's idea. This but, is pro edition. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Should I order some of these? Thumbs up. Okay, that's the general. So I'll I'll just do that. I stuck with the blue that we had last time. Um the other thing was uh beanies. So it's okay. So before you comment on this, let me just tell you the black lettering of chaos makes it really hard to find a hat that you can put the logo on that doesn't just completely fade away. See what I'm saying? So it's basically got to be a like a blaze orange hat, a yellow, a <laughs> like a neon yellow hat, or a white hat. So. I, I did this like in a minute. So if you're like, Bleh, that's horrible. Trust me, I take no offense. What do people think about this? That I would order some of these and we could bring them to ChaosCon as well. I, I like hats and Belgium is cold that time of year. <laughs> it All is. men like hats, so. I mean, I can do things like, see if I change the color, like see how, see what happens. The chaos disappears. Yes, and but you kind can, of you could change the lettering to white. I can I yeah I have to ask if I can do that. No, I, you know, with the I don't language. think that's in our logo. <coughs> right. Yeah, I'm guessing I can't touch it. The other thing <coughs> I thought about was just cutting out the the O. You know, it's kind of the logo. See what I'm saying? And just putting the O on the hat, but. Again, yeah. I'd, have to go, I'd have to go ask. It, it ended up looking funny anyway. It just looked like a weird, a weird thing on a hat. Matt, Matt, like the black one, you can still put the kiosk on a, a cream white white uh, banner. Like it kind of. I can't move it up there. <laughs> it won't let me. Are you talking about putting it up here? No, 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 no. Where it is, but let it appear like the immediate background where it is just to make it visible, not the entire cap. It's just yeah, another think, way of visualizing it. 
I think Armstrong is saying basically put the chaos logo on a patch. Oh, so that the you're saying. patch yeah. could have kind of a white background, like a rectangular, oh. like put a white background beneath this. So yeah. instead of embroidery, have it be a patch. I see. That would probably cost more money. I'm not sure your vendor would do that. They might. Well, what do people think about beanies? I got a big thumbs up <coughs> on, on the poker chips, but <laughs> less than enthusiastic. <laughs> I think in in previous in previous calls there was a lot of enthusiasm for the for the beanies, and uh, uh -huh. I'm uh, I'm still very enthusiastic about it. And the the one you have displayed there, mm -hmm. uh, it has one color from the uh, from the logo. I I, I think that's probably going to be about the best you can do. As, as far as matching colors go. Uh, so I think the one you had depicted before was, was actually pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you can see what happens on the rest of them. Like anything I pick, it just ends up looking, this is high important stuff. So well, this one's pretty good. What about that one? And you want to have the pom-pom on top? That was the goal was a, the general request was for a pom-pom. Oh, the gray one's not bad. What about that? Yeah. <laughs> if we go with this bright green or yellow, then we will for sure draw a lot of attention <laughs> at Boston. But I don't want to wear it then. <laughs> because... But it's for safety when we go on the street. Oh, I like this. <laughs> is, it, is this appealing to anybody? Any of these Packers? Gray. I think that, that light gray works, or the uh, or the first one you showed us, I think, works as well. Anybody Actually, have the, the, first two, the first two you showed us, uh, pray out to this one. I like them. The white one? The one the before this one. I think gray is the best. Okay. I, I like more than white. Okay. I'll go go back to that first one you had showed us. Yeah, sure. I to remember. I think it was this. That. All right. So the, the pink raspberry does actually match that the O logo color right that there. Thing right there. Yeah. All right, well, not everybody has to love them. <laughs> All right, this is the very important stuff. All right, so anyway. You, you could um, do half, half and half. Get the... How about this? I'll take a look at like how many I have to order of each. It, you know, sometimes I have like limits or like minimum numbers that I have to order on these hats. So let me do a little bit more investigation, but I think the, the, the in the past conversations, the beanie hat has been well received. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, all right, so that's that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Poker chips all order. <laughs> that seems like a no brainer. All right. Um, so then um, could we could folks continue to promote chaos con. That's my really my last thing here. And please think about submitting yourself if you're going to be in Brussels at the time. Um, so love to see everybody there. So please, please really do think about promoting it on your social media channels. I can reach out to the Linux Foundation again. This is promoting for submissions. Um, the Linux Foundation did tweet it out a while back. I'll continue. I'll reach out to them again probably in a couple weeks. Um, and encourage them to do that again. But please, please do your do, do your two click part <laughs> and click this thing out. <laughs> um, if you need to just retweet it, um, Don <coughs> Don had tweeted this out already, and so has the Linux Foundation. So you should be actually pretty easy to find an existing tweet to just to go off of. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, anything else from people? that are on the call right now. Anybody? 
going once, going twice. All right, um, next week's a more formal call. So I'm gonna reach out to software folks and maybe you could do some demos of some of the stuff that you have, Sean. Yeah. Or um, there are a variety of folks, but anybody from Grimoire Lab kind of show us what's new and kind of what's happening with your software. That might be nice for next week. All right. After the call, would be great if the organizing committee for ChaosCon could stay on. Yeah. So why don't we call an end? We can stop recording. This is the end of the Chaos Community call. For those of you that want to stick around to talk about chaos, organizing ChaosCon, um, please stay on the line. But otherwise, we'll see you next week. Thanks for everybody's time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.